Welcome to the sixth module in the six-part training series of the FR5969 Launchpad. In this module, we will learn about the memory protection unit and how it can be configured. FRAM is very easy to use and modify. This increases the likelihood of an unintentional erase or overwrite when application code performs an illegal access, for example, during a pointer overflow. We recommend planning and setting up memory segments as read, write, or executable prior to the start of application code. Access management settings for FRAM are set up using the memory protection unit, which allows the user to assign read, write, and execute accesses to specified areas of memory. Using the MPU, the main memory can be configured with up to three segments of variable size. We can also assign access rights for each of these segments independently. Also, the information memory can have its own access rights set independently. There are different methods to configure access management settings using the MPU. The most secure way is by using the linker command file, which pre-configures the settings at compile time and then writes it to the registers prior to the execution of C startup. Alternatively, the MPU can be configured at the start of application code and then reconfigured as needed during code execution. On this slide, you see a screen capture of the FR59 linker command file. This file with the extension .cmd can be found in the project folder once the target device is configured as the FR5969. By default, the MPU settings are commented out. Uncommenting these lines will allow the IDE to assign protection for read-only and read-execute memories. Configuring the MPU using the CMD file is useful if you do not intend to change it during code execution. If there is a need to change these settings during code runtime, it is preferable to use application code for the configuration. The lab in this module illustrates how this is done. A quick note on the granularity of each MPU segment. These segments scale with the total amount of memory available on the device. The FR5969 is a 64 kilobyte device, hence the smallest size of a segment is given by the formula on the slide, which is 16 bytes. Now, let's learn how to configure the MPU in four easy steps. The first step involves deciding on segment boundaries. This is fully dependent on the application. For the purposes of this lab, we will use the arbitrary locations shown on the slide. Next, we will need to figure out the bit settings that need to go into the MPU segment boundary register to configure these boundaries. This is done by right-shifting the address by 4 bits. The user's guide also has a listing of various segment boundary settings for different addresses. The third step is to write these values to the MPU seg register. Then we assign rights and violation responses for each protected block. For example, the first two blocks can be read and execute with write disabled. This is suitable for code memory. The last block can be read only with write and execute disabled. This is suitable for constant data. Once you've set the protection on the segments, you can configure what happens when a violation occurs, either a non-maskable interrupt or a reset. If you set the MPU lock bit, you can lock the MPU settings until a BOR occurs so that the access protections cannot be accidentally changed. Now, let's start with the lab. The source code for the lab, as well as this PowerPoint presentation, is available from the link shown on this slide. An easy way to find it is to go to processors.wiki.ti.com and then search for the term FR59XX Training Workshop. Once you find the wiki page, browse to the launchpad section and then download the lab zip file from the link marked lab material. On opening the zip file, copy and paste the folder lab3 underscore mpu underscore runtime into your workspace directory. Now the project for the lab is set up. 
The goal for this lab is to create a bright protected memory segment, cause an access violation by writing to that segment, and observing the result of that access violation. Open the source code file lab3 underscore mpu underscore runtime.c and use the comments as a guide. See if you can fill in the blanks and get the code to build. Don't worry, the solution code is also included in case you need it. Once the code builds, if it's running properly, the LED should toggle to show that access violations are occurring. You can also use a breakpoint in the memory window to observe that the write to address 6002 that is in a write protected segment does not occur. The system issues an NMI when this access is attempted. Here is the first part of the solution, configuring the segment boundaries. As you can see, two segments are configured as read and execute, and one is configured as read only. Here is the second part of the solution, configuring the access violation setting. Did your answers match the solution shown on this slide? If it did, you should see the LED blinking as a sign that the system NMI subroutine was accessed. Remember, you will need to clear the segment violation flag, which causes the interrupt in the system NMI subroutine to continue executing the code. If this flag is not cleared, code execution continues to loop inside the interrupt service routine. In this lab, we learned how to create memory segments, configure these segment boundaries in the MPU registers, set up access rights for each segment, and configure the action on access violation for each segment. Remember, you can always use driverlib to configure the MPU easily and quickly. This concludes our six-part training series. Thank you for listening.